and in excess. I mean, wow, that was – it probably seems like a lifetime ago now because that was about 2014, I think. Yeah, it. it's hard – it's almost getting to the point where it's hard for me to relate to the person who did that yeah, because right. it seems so absurd that I that I got to do that role. Like, it still seems like a thing I would dream about doing. Yeah, I did, I mean, in high school I made a joke saying I want to play him one day and obviously when I had the long hair, yeah, you know, that people would – Sometimes I sometimes met people who knew Michael who said that I reminded uh, them of him and um, and just yeah and just having some essence. It got brought up a few times, so I thought when they were casting that, I thought, well, it's my role to lose. I should at least be in with a shot. And I sent them tapes and tapes before they were even casting. Once I heard it was happening, I just went, oh, I just recreated some interviews that I you know watch YouTube and put some things together. So yeah, it was just a dream role and I actually got it which is absurd and then it was another one of those things where everyone knew it was such a responsibility to have like to be a part of telling that story that everyone just worked so hard and put so much of their heart into it and even though there was pressure sometimes the pressure of doing something like that can stress everyone Massive, out and, yeah. and, and everyone can get a bit too serious and a bit too precious, but somehow it was still just the most fun show to be a part of, uh, which owes a lot to Dana Reed, who's, you know, who brought us all together and managed, you know, steered that ship and um, gave me, you know, a, a, you know, enough freedom, but also enough, you know, direction to get through it all. But it was, yeah, it was super special. I mean, like, so singing... And sex scenes. Like, those <laughs> two would probably be the most terrifying things I would imagine for oh. for anybody really having to do that on camera. Do you relate to that or were you just oh, straight in? Mm, the, look, the sex scenes, nothing compared to the singing as far as nervousness. I am not much of a singer. Luckily for that, no one was going to tune in to hear me sing, first of all. And, you know, it was very much about hearing those songs and hearing those hits. Um, and if I could sing like Michael Hutchins, I'd probably be on tour right now. Like, I, I would, yeah, I, I dream to be able to sing like that. So I can get my, I can get, work my way through. And I did, like, in some of the rehearsal scenes and in moments I was, you know, I, you do hear me singing in the show. But it was a lot of miming because, yeah, because... I, I cannot sing like Michael Hutchins. I wish I could, but you know, there was only one, I guess. That's absolutely no. If I uh, so and and because one of the great joys of that show as well is that everyone went out and bought the albums afterwards, and that music was really introduced to a whole new generation, as well as reintroduced to people who might have forgotten just how many hits they had and how good the music was and how timeless a lot of it is. So um, it would have been a real disappointment if I'd you know, done much more singing and just <laughs> and done anything to destroy that legacy. So for me, I, I, I would much rather, you know, have to get naked than have to <laughs> sing in public, really. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Well, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, I would probably agree with that. And yeah. playing, playing a role of somebody who does end up passing away, was there any downsides to that? Yeah, it... it, it it's really... Well, especially the way he died and the kind of, not only the, you know, in one side of things, the mystery around it, as, but then also the, the amount of unfinished business, I think. The, the unexpected nature of it meant that a lot of people are still carrying around, yeah, lots of unf feelings that, just a lack of closure. And that's both, not only both people who knew him, so because the band were involved in the show, that was a that was a real thing that was really there every day a real potency of going okay we we're, we're we're going back to their memories and i'm stepping into the shoes of someone that they love dearly and who isn't around anymore you, you can't um overstate the responsibility and the just how serious that is really to do um but then also every, that that feeling in certain degrees permeates through so many people and since doing the show I still go around and people want to tell me their their Michael stories and it was either the time that I got invited backstage to a gig or saw him at this pub one day or met him at you know through some friends and he was just one of those guys that affected so many people and and touched so many people that his death affected 
lots of us and most of us remember where we were when we heard. So both while doing it and afterwards, it's been a real, um, you know, humbling experience and also something that I don't know if I've completely worked out how to deal with in that situation and how to kind of, that I'm now, you know, in a small way, I've gone into, I've stepped into his story for a little bit, but I played a version of Michael that fit into that story we were telling. And, you know, I never met him myself, but I was, I threw the job, got to meet lots of people who knew him and loved him. Um, yeah, so so that's a that's a long rambling, you know, way of saying. Do you still saying, get people yeah, coming up to you? Absolutely, all the time yeah. Telling um, you their Michael story that's really hectic. Yeah, I'll follow you for a long time then. Absolutely, and it's you know, and I you know, I'm I'm an actor, and I I did my best in that role for that little bit of a moment I had stepping into that story. But it's so it's I guess it's just you know I don't know exactly what to do or with it. With, with all of those stories, except it's it's kind of nice to listen to, but also, you know, it's when you hear about someone like that who everyone he talked to felt like they were the only person in the room and he kind of just someone who went out to the world with a lot of love and made everyone he was with feel really special. And I think, you know, if people come up to me and remind me, you know, <laughs> the, what that means to people and, you know, it's, it's he's kind of still someone to look up to. And I think one of the nice things was there were two parts of that show where really the first that first episode is boys from Australia take on the world and win. And then in the episode, we see the cost of that. But in the first, there was a lot of times it was really just celebrating the band and what they did and their friendship. So even though there was a, that element of darkness in the story, we got to spend a lot of time just having a lot of fun and, you know, pretending to be rock stars, which is always <laughs> That's great. Not, yeah. a bad, not a bad way to go, right? Yeah. Throw any televisions out any windows or anything? No. L- didn't get quite you. that far. <laughs> um, but we did definitely, you know, it was another great cast to work with. And we, you know, it's, it, when people start treating you like a rock star during the day, it's, I, when I did have to go back and go to Black Sails again for season two after doing it. And I did, I kind of, I think I strutted back into Cape Town and, you know, a lot of was, was flicking my hair a lot and had to kind King of be knocked, knocked back I'm down back. a few pegs. I go like, okay, you're not a rock star anymore. Yeah. Yeah. 